on, brothers and sisters. Yep. We back again. And we just sitting there having some generalized conversation because uh, sometimes I have allergic reaction to our foolishness. And then I'm telling you the honest to God truth, some of the stuff is just downright stupidity. Because we don't see. Um, so what we was talking about. We was just sitting there, I was sitting there explaining to one of my young brothers how assistance, when people give you government assistance, they lock you in to a mindset. And so contrary to what we see on Facebook with all of the, uh, the Israelite factor and all that, when you come out here in the world, you see that Israel ain't nowhere near woke. When you come out here in the hood that you living in, you see Israel ain't nowhere near woke. And then the only thing, we're going to put some work in on Facebook. We don't want to deal with these people that we living with every day. Some of them is your sons and daughters. Some of them is nieces and nephews. You know, some of them is even mamas. Welfare, Section 8. You know, I be saying to myself that, okay, here, you, you, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's come with some scripture out of the book of Sirach. Live not the life of a beggar, rather desire death than to live the life of a beggar. Because he that depends on another man's table. You know what? The, the scripture say you might as well just go find the nearest cliff that you can find and just fall off of it. We got our brothers out here holding up signs on street corners. Every store you go to, somebody's begging for 50 cents. This and that. Now, I'm not saying not to have compassion on people. You know, not to do nothing for them here or there. But this is ridiculous, man. So, But panhandling ain't the only form of begging. No, nah, it's not. You when, know what I'm saying? Man, I'm, just, I'm just elaborating on what you were saying. No, nah, it ain't. Because when you're down in these governmental offices, you understand what I'm saying? It's a difference between you being in a situation. Okay, look here. Let's see. Let's see. I had an injury a few years back, and I applied for disability, and I got disability, all right? Now, but that's my money, okay? Because, see, that's the money that I didn't put into the system mm. while I was working, while I was uh, doing my slave labor. That was my money already. You know, they really don't want to give you the money. I'm only 50. They don't want to give you your money until you get about 65, 70 years old. They hate to have to give you your money when you're like 50 and then you turn around. If I live another 25 years, then guess what? You see, I'm the dude that the government wants to escape from dealing with. But now we got some of our brothers and sisters that, uh, you know, that's different. That's rightfully yours. Opposed to you being able body, and then you can learn, and then you can go get a job. But instead of that, I'll just take this Section 8. Yeah. I'll just take this Section 8. Yeah, but some people feel like that Section 8 is theirs. You know what I'm saying? I've met people where they went out, got houses on Section 8, and they feel like, oh, this is my house. But yeah. well, it's not, though. They fooling themselves. They fooling themselves. Because what you don't understand is that you are not living up to the potential that the Most High means for His people to live up to. And when we do things like that, we stagnate our own growth. And we kill our own hopes and visions and dreams of things that we could accomplish 
or things that we would desire to accomplish. And so the other nations know how great of a people that you are. So they said, well, here's how we're going to kill their hopes and we're going to kill their dreams by giving them this. We're going to give them this little piece right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to make them dependent on us. And it's going to stop them from ever being productive or doing anything uh, that they were capable of doing. Because they feel like, well, why should I do it? I mean, you know, I only pay $38 a month. And, and you know what? And, and these are the knucklehead women that's in the club with the yeah. fake weave, with the fake eyelashes. You understand what I'm saying? I had a question for what? you. What? So you said that it locks you into a state of mind. What state of mind would that be? It destroys your vision, okay? Okay, now, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, or it's Ecclesiastes, in the diligence of doing business, there is a multitude of dreams and visions that spring forth. Mm. Okay, so it's like if I'm out and I'm doing some work and I'm doing some work or I'm trying to be productive, then guess what? The Father gives me more dreams and more visions on how I can enhance what I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I'm out cutting grass and the only thing I got is a weed eater and a lawnmower, but I'm taking that and I'm going to work with it, in the midst of me doing that work and sweating, the Father brings new visions into my, into my mind as to uh, how I can better what I'm doing. Okay, now you need to save your money. Let's, boy, just think of how it was if you had a riding lawnmower. Well, think of how it is if you had a tractor. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But see, a man won't ever have those visions if he's not doing anything. But why is the Father going to give you visions if you're not on your way nowhere and you ain't doing nothing already? So that sounds like it's a mind state of laziness. They see, what well, it do, it locks you in. It destroys your vision. And the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. That's what's happening to our people. Wow. We ain't literally perishing, but all of our dreams, all of our hopes, all of the things that we could be doing, perish. They die. Because you don't understand. What they're giving you is not giving you to help you. It's giving to destroy you. Wow. And our people don't see it. You know? And I mean, you have to question things that are free. Ain't nothing free. Ain't nothing free. <laughs> Ain't nothing free. Nothing free. Only thing that's free is the life that the Father gives you. You understand what I'm saying? Everything else costs. Because, you know, you got to put forth something in order to become a beneficiary of something. Okay, God give you air to breathe that wake you up every day. But... It's like, you know what? If you don't get out and work, you ain't gonna have no money. And if you don't have no money, you gonna live the life of a beggar. You understand what I'm saying? And now you are gonna be forced to depend on bread that belongs to somebody else. So guess what? You think I'm gonna give you my good steak? No. Hell no. I might give you the bone. It may have a little meat left on it. You understand what I'm saying? The scraps. Because, see, I'm moving by the scripture. Contrary to what people say, it's like, uh, do not give your substance to other people. Why? Here's why you don't give your substance to other people. You don't give your substance to other people. is because you get out and you work and you fulfill the commandment that God gave Adam when he said, by the sweat of your brow, you shall work. And then the ground going to... It's going to yield to you what you work for. All right? So if you go out and you work hard and you get your stuff and you turn around and you giving it to everybody else because you feel sorry, where the hell you think those people going to be when you need something? They ain't going to be able to help you. No. You know what? And you know what? They just going to go and start begging from the next person. Yeah. So this, this message is like to my... My 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 fallen Israelite queens that have got comfortable that have gotten comfortable with Section Eight 
with welfare, with all of this and that and the other. You know what? You crazy. You don't even classify or qualify to be called an Israelite because you're still in a state of lostness. See, it's a whole package. And into my fallen Israelite king brothers. You ain't no Israelite. Half of you jokers is laying up with the woman that's in that condition. And you're, you're content because you ain't contributing nothing either. You don't want to get out. You don't want to work. You don't want to go get a job. You understand what I'm saying? Kids suffering. Yeah, everybody want to be talking about these Bible verses and everything. You know what I mean? Let's get down to some of this simplistic, hardcore truth about living. You know, we don't hide behind no scriptures. You see, the Bible say, let your good works show. Then me to turn around and give your father in heaven glory. See, when we get out here and start putting in work, then our work produces things that causes our brothers to become beneficiaries to the point to where they start thanking the most high for you. You know, and ain't nothing wrong with getting some assistance. You know, that's if there, that's what it's there for. You know what I mean? Well, you know, that's what, you know, the key word of it is called temporary. Yeah. It means for a time. To help you get back on your feet. That's what I always took it as being. Yeah. But, you know, I understand the fact that it do cause a, a lazy mind state. Because it yeah. puts you in a situation where you really don't have to do nothing. You ask anybody this. Anybody this that been working. I don't care what city they live in. What state they live in. You ask somebody that been working all their life. And taking care of their business. When they fail on hard times. It was almost impossible for them to get assistance. You see, they're not giving no visionary assistance because they want him on the ground. We don't want to help him get up. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. Well, no, nah, Mr. Milligan, you don't qualify for no assistance because of, you know what? Never mind what the papers say. You understand? I'm in trouble. You mean to tell me this joker over here got a thousand dollar water bill and you're going to cut mines off for $75 and I can't even get no help? Why? Because they know that you consistently take care of your business and they don't want you to be able to do that. Mm. You feel me? I don't. You know? So That's crazy. It's, it's crazy, but it is what it is. It you is. see, it's, it's war real. being ways in so many different ways that our minds are stuck on certain things and we're not fighting in the areas that we should be fighting. You see, Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom have suffered violent and the violent taken by force. The, the violent taken by force. Who are the violent? Who are the violent of the earth? The violent are the Jeremiah's of the world. He said, this day I have made you as an iron pillar and a brazen wall and a rod for the backs of kings, princes, and the nations. He said, you go and take, you take what's rightfully yours. And you go and wage war to do it. You see, there's war being waged in us on so many different levels that the only thing we can think about is fighting somebody with our fists. You know? That look alike. Man, tell your me. Your brothers and your sisters. Yep. Yep. They look just like you. You yeah. know what I mean? You fight against them hard. Yep. But you can't see the strategically matrix that's fighting against you. No. You know, because that's a strategy. And then when somebody come to deal with you about your foolishness, you, you, you know what I mean? You whining. But a lot of them, you know that you ain't working no job. You know you've been on Section 8. You know you've been, you think you're getting over on the system, but you're destroying your own life and you're destroying the lives of the ones that's following you and the ones that's raising you by not producing anything that causes somebody to want to do something. Great. You feel me? Yeah. I'm a father. 
You understand what I'm saying? I'm a father. My daughter ain't got no business on no damn section, eight. You don't sit around and lay up and hide, let, let uh, become no trash receptacle for no man, no a uh, rot gut raggedy man sperm. You don't become no trash receptacle to them and start having all these babies by no man that ain't got no vision that ain't going nowhere. And just because you're in that situation don't mean you can't get out. Yeah. You yeah. can get out. And you can get up. And you can be something great. You can. Because it's the Father's will for you to be great. But you got to be able to digest the strong medicine when it comes. You know? Now, brothers out here, only thing they want, they, they, the, the sum total of a lot of them's vision is to, is to buy a gun. No. Get a car on some on some rims. You know, every time I see one of these jokers riding by me on some big 30-inch rims or something like that, I be saying, you know what? You destroyed already. Because that is like ghetto stardom. You understand what I'm saying? That's yeah. the pinnacle. I have arrived. When I got a clean car and it's on some big rims, I have a ride and now I ride through the neighborhood with my head up high and mean mug and turn my nose up at my other brothers. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't got the sense enough to understand that I'm the one that been duped. Man, I mean, what do you have? Got a a car, car with big rims. With some expensive rims. Pulling up in front of a Probably Section 8 don't a, even have a house. Pulling up in front of a Section 8 apartment. Probably don't have a job. Probably did a lot of wicked stuff to achieve that. Now we ain't gonna go wrong.